Thank you for purchasing a Juki sewing machine. This computerized household sewing machine incorporates Juki's industrial sewing machine technology to produce superior stitch quality and sewing performance. We assure that this machine will satisfy even those users aspiring to produce works of the finest quality. We hope this DVD will be helpful for you to enjoy your sewing. To ensure safety, always turn off the power switch and unplug the power cord from its electrical outlet in these situations. While sewing, keep an eye on the needle and keep hands away from all the moving parts. To use the foot controller, Insert the plug of the cord securely into the controller plug socket located in the right side of the sewing machine. The machine receptacle for the power cord is located in the right side of the sewing machine next to the controller plug socket. Turn on the power switch. Set the power switch to I. The sewing machine can be stopped and started by using the foot controller. The machine begins operating when the foot controller is pressed and stops when the controller is released. The color of the start-stop button indicates the status of the machine. Green indicates that the machine is ready to sew or currently sewing. Red indicates that the machine is not ready to start. While pressing the reverse switch button, Machine sews reverse or lock stitch, and the machine will stop when the button is released. After sewing, press thread trimming button to trim both the needle and the bobbing threads, and the needle stops at upper position. Thread trimming function is also built in this foot controller. You can trim threads by stepping on the heel side of the foot controller. The needle position will change by pressing the needle up-down button while the machine is stopped. When the needle is in up position, the needle moves down, and when the needle is in down position, the needle moves up. While sewing, the speed can be adjusted by sliding the speed controller. Slide the speed controller to the right to sew faster, and to the left to sew slower. When you turn on the machine, the LCD screen indicates number one, straight stitch of the center needle position. Use the pattern selection buttons below the screen to select a pattern. The screen shows the number of the stitch pattern and the marking of the presser foot to be used. Choose a pattern selection mode by pressing one of the pattern selection mode by switching buttons. With direct select, you can select among 10 of the most commonly used patterns while Select by Number allows you to select other patterns by number. One Point Patterns Letters allows you to choose a combination of patterns. When you choose your desired stitch pattern, the machine automatically displays the standard stitch width and stitch length. To adjust these settings manually, Use the zigzag width and stitch length adjusting dials located below the screen. When you stop the sewing operation, the needle generally stops in down position. However, you can change this position by pressing the needle stop position switching button. As you can see, the accessory parts are neatly stored in the auxiliary bed. For free arm sewing, remove the auxiliary bed. For free motion sewing or attaching a button, remove the auxiliary bed and move the drop feed knob to the right side to lower the feed dog. A wide table can also be attached to the sewing machine. Pull the feed out from the bottom of the table until they snap securely into place. Fit the table over the top of the free arm of the sewing machine. Adjust the height of the feet so that the top surface of the table is flush with the body of the sewing machine. 
Turn the power switch off before replacing the presser foot. Raise the presser foot. Press the presser foot releasing button to remove the presser foot. To attach the new presser foot, align the pin on the presser foot and the groove on the presser foot holder. Carefully lower the presser foot holder with the presser foot lifting lever. Use the knee lifting lever to raise and lower the presser foot without using your hands. To attach the knee lifting lever, align the tabs on its base end with the notches in the knee lifting lever hole located on the lower right of the machine and then insert. Push the knee lifting lever to the right to raise the presser foot and back to the left to lower the presser foot. In case the thread tension is not correctly set, adjust the tension by using the thread tension adjustment dial which is located under the cover on the top of the machine. You can adjust the presser foot pressure according to the thickness and type of fabric to be used. Turn the presser foot pressure adjustment dial located inside the top cover. For normal sewing, set the presser foot pressure adjustment to 5. When sewing lightweight synthetic fabrics, stretchy fabrics, or appliques, which fabrics may shift during sewing, Set the presser foot pressure adjustment dial to a smaller number to reduce pressure. Always turn the power switch off before replacing the needle. Use a regular household sewing machine needle. Turn the hand wheel towards you until the needle comes to the highest position and lower the presser foot. Loosen the needle set screw with T-shaped screwdriver supplied as a standard accessory part. Then, remove the needle. Hold the needle with its flat part facing away from you and insert it fully until it touches the stopper pin. Then, securely tighten the needle set screw. Pull the hook cover release button towards you to remove the hook cover. Then take out the bobbin. Place the thread spool to the spool pin and attach the spool cap. The spool cap can be reversed to match the size of the thread spool. Pull some thread from the spool and thread it to the thread guys marked 1 and 2. Then thread it to the thread guide number 3. Thread the thread firmly into the thread guide. Set the bobbin on the bobbin winding shaft. Wind the thread to bobbin 4-5 times in clockwise direction. Put the thread end into the guide at the bobbin winding shaft and pull it to the right side to cut it. Push the bobbin winding regulator toward the bobbin to start winding the bobbin. To stop winding the bobbin pathway, push the bobbin winding regulator to the right. The machine will stop automatically after the winding and the bobbin winding regulator will move back to its original position. Remove the bobbin from the shaft and cut the thread by cutter. Place the bobbin inside the bobbin case holder. Before putting the bobbin in place, make sure that the thread winds counterclockwise. Thread groove 1 and along guides 2 and 3. Cut the thread with the built-in cutter. Finally, close the hook cover. Bobbin setting is complete now. You can begin sewing without pulling up the bobbin thread. Always turn the power switch off before threading the needle. Raise the presser foot. Raise the needle to its highest position by aligning the marking at the hand wheel with the one on the machine body. 
hold the end of the thread and pass it through guides 1 through 5, following the arrows. When you come to the guide 6 on the needle bar, pass the thread from the right side. You can now thread the needle, lower the presser foot and pull the thread up to 7, cut the thread at 8 and lower the threading lever 9 until it comes to a complete stop. Release the threading lever to thread the needle, then pull the end of the thread backward. Use the standard presser foot A for straight stitch. Turn the hand wheel towards you to lower the needle to a starting position. Lower the presser foot and step on the foot controller to begin sewing. When you finish sewing, step on the heel side of foot controller to trim the threads. Raise the presser foot and remove the fabric. Once the thread is automatically trimmed, you can start sewing again without pulling up the bobbing thread. To begin sewing the edge of thick fabrics, first lower the needle to a starting position. Press the black button located on the left side of the standard presser foot. Then, lower the presser foot. Once the presser foot is lowered, Remove your finger from the button and begin sewing. To change the sewing direction, stop the machine just before the point where you want to change direction. Use the needle up-down button to continue sewing slowly until you reach the exact point where you want to change direction. When you get to the point you want, lift the presser foot with the needle left in the fabric. Change your sewing direction, then lower the presser foot again and start the machine. When you want to sew reverse stitches, press the reverse stitch button at the desired point. The machine will only sew a reverse stitch while the reverse stitch button is being pressed. The machine can automatically sew lock stitches at the beginning and end of sewing and then trim the threads. We'll use a straight stitch as an example. Press the automatic lock switch and thread trimming button. The automatic lock stitch and thread trimming icon will appear on the screen. Press the button again and it will disable the automatic lock stitch feature. Once you have selected automatic lock stitch and thread trimming function, position your fabric at the point where you want to sew, then start. The machine will sew a few reverse stitches before starting to sew. Let your foot off from the foot controller to stop sewing part way. When you are finished sewing completely, press the reverse stitch button. The machine will sew a few reverse stitches, trim the thread, and then stop automatically. You can change the needle position of straight stitch by using the zigzag width adjusting dial located below the LCD screen. Turn the dial to the left to move the needle to the left and to the right to move it to the right. You can also change the length of the stitch by using the stitch length adjusting dial under the screen. Turn the dial to the left for a shorter stitch and to the right for a longer stitch. The overcasting stitch is used to prevent fabric edges from fraying. There are three kinds of overcasting stitches available. Select the pattern that suits the fabric you are working with. We'll use the direct select pattern number 7, overcasting stitch, as an example. 
Use overcasting presser foot C for this stitch. Position the edge of the fabric so that it aligns with the guide and lower the presser foot. Start the machine. Sew slowly, making sure the edge of the fabric stays in line with the guide. The machine comes with 16 patterns that can be used for buttonhole. Select your desired buttonhole. Use buttonhole presser foot E for this stitch. Pull out the button holder on the presser foot. Place the button on the button holder and push the holder back in until the holder stops against the button. This step sets a suitable buttonhole size. Pass the needle thread down through the hole in the presser foot and pull it out sideways once the machine is set. Insert the buttonhole sensor pin into sensor pinhole at the left side of the machine body. Make sure that the sensor pin is pushed in as far as possible. We'll use the standard buttonhole pattern as an example. Place the fabric under the presser foot and lower the needle to the sewing start point. Lower the presser foot and begin sewing. Sewing buttonholes on thin fabrics or near overlap sections can be easier when the clamping plate is used. After passing the thread through the buttonhole presser foot E, set the clamping plate as shown in the drawing and attach the assembly to the presser foot holder. Sewing is performed as usual by inserting the fabric between the presser foot and clamping plate. To remove the clamping plate, hold the portion A. When the buttonhole stitch is finished, the machine will sew lock stitch and stop automatically. Once the machine stops, Push thread trimming button to trim the threads. Use the ripper tool to open the buttonhole. Using the stopper pin as shown will prevent you from cutting the stitches. The buttonhole is complete now. The buttonhole width can be adjusted and you can choose one out of three settings. To adjust the width, select the option Changing the seam width of buttonhole. For smaller buttonhole width, select the icon indicating a narrower width and press OK. The width is now changed. There is a wide variety of decorative switch patterns available on your sewing machine. The types of switch patterns are displayed inside the top cover Let's use this decorative stitch pattern as an example. Press the Select by Number button. Choose the decorative pattern icon and press OK. Now, input 0, 2 to select the desired pattern. Use the presser foot marked I for this stitch. Place the fabric under the presser foot. Lower the presser foot and begin sewing. We'll use a scallop stitch as an example. Press the One Point Patterns Letters button. Choose the One Point icon and choose OK. Input 2-4 for a scallop stitch. When you press the Continuous Stitch button, the machine will sew the selected stitch pattern continuously. Use Manual Button Hole Presser Foot I for this stitch. Place the fabric under the presser foot. Lower the presser foot and begin sewing. Since this pattern can be elongated, you can adjust the length of the pattern. To do this, select the option Elongation and press OK. 
Select one of the five sizes and press OK to change the size. When you sew a scallop stitch, it is important to leave a little extra room at the edge of the fabric. This will prevent the stitch from running off the edge. Your machine can sew both letters and numbers. Use manual buttonhole presser fit I for this stitch. Let's sew the letters J U K I. First, press the one point patterns letters button and select font of alphabets. Input methods is similar to writing a text message on a cell phone. Press this button once for J and this button twice for U. To correct an error to change what you entered, press the clear key to delete one character at a time. Re-enter the characters you want to sew instead. When the clear key is pressed continuously, all of the selected letters can be deleted. After selecting a pattern, start sewing, finish sewing, and cut the thread ends of jump stitches. Your letters are now complete! When sewing letters and other stitch patterns, you should always perform a sewing test on the same type of fabric first because the pattern could deform depending on the type and thickness of the fabric and fusible interlining being used. First, press the Select by Number button and choose the practical pattern number 22. Use the presser foot I. If the pattern appears higher on the right side, turn the pattern adjustment dial to the left. If the pattern appears lower on the right side, turn the pattern adjustment dial to the right. Letters and one-point patterns can be combined and saved for later use. A maximum of 10 combinations including manual adjustments of stitch patterns can be saved. First, select the desired stitch patterns, then press the Save Call button. Use the arrow keys to select the destination folder and press OK to save the patterns. Next, select Save and press OK. To call save patterns, press the Save Call button, highlight the desired folder using the arrow buttons and press OK. Select Call and press OK. To delete the contents of a folder, highlight the folder and press OK. Then select Delete and press OK. Your machine can sew a wide variety of patchwork kilt patterns. Sewing pieces of cloth together is called piecing in patchwork. The seam allowance for piecing is generally quarter inch. First, cut the fabric to sizes that account for a seam allowance of quarter an inch. Select direct pattern number two. Use the presser foot A. Place two pieces of fabric right sides together and align the right edges of the fabric with the right edge of the presser foot. In this position, the needle will enter the fabric at quarter inch from the right edge, enabling you to sew with a seam allowance of quarter inch. A compact zigzag stitch is used to sew the edge of an applique of cut fabric. 
select direct pattern number 5. Use the presser foot I or O. Cut the applique fabric along the finishing lines and fix temporarily to the base fabric. Double-sided fusible interlining or the equivalent is recommended for affixing the applique securely. Be sure to apply the interlining all the way to the edges of the applique. Begin sewing by turning the hand wheel towards you so that the needle falls outside the applique fabric. When you begin sewing, the machine will automatically sew three lock stitches. When sewing around sharp angles of an applique, raise the presser foot while the needle is sunk in the fabric outside the applique and continue slowly while changing the sewing direction. This will ensure a continuous line with no spacing between stitches. When you have finished sewing the applique, press the reverse stitch button to sew 3 to 5 reverse stitches to lock the seam. An applique can be sewn with inconspicuous stitching. Cut the applique fabric with a seam allowance of 3 to 5 millimeters. Place the pattern paper on the wrong side of the fabric and fold back the seam allowance at the finishing lines. Place the applique fabric onto the base fabric and fix temporarily with basting stitches or glue. Select direct pattern number 6. Use the presser foot I or O. Turn the hand wheel towards you so that the needle initially falls outside the applique fabric. When you begin sewing, the machine will automatically sew three lock stitches. Form lock stitches when sewing the applique is done. Press the reverse stitch button to sew a few lock stitches. Sewing lock stitches outside the applique fabric looks better and neat. Kilting is typically a technique for sewing three layers of materials, including a top fabric, a cotton batting, and a backing material together. The top and bottom layers of fabric tend to shift more during kilting than when simply sewing two layers of fabric together. However, the walking foot can be used to feed both top and bottom fabrics simultaneously to minimize fabric shifting. Place the top layer of fabric with patchwork or applique over the cotton batting and backing material and secure with pins or basting stitches. First. Press the Select by Number button and choose the practical pattern number 2. The walking foot end is used as the presser foot. Remove the presser foot holder and place the fork portion of the actuating lever around the needle clamp. Fit the mounting part into the presser bar and securely tighten the set screw for the presser foot holder. Use both hands to spread the fabric apart while sewing. Sew at medium to slow speed. Free motion kilting allows you to move the fabric freely in any direction without using the feed dog of the sewing machine. By lowering the feed dog into its drop feed condition, you can guide the fabric by hand to sew stitches along intricate curves and in any direction. Secure the top fabric, cotton batting, and backing material together with pins or basting stitches. Select direct pattern number 1. Use the kilt presser foot Q as the presser foot. Attach the kilt presser foot and securely tighten the set screw for the presser foot holder.
Slide the drop feed knob to the right to lower the feed dog. Place the fabric under the presser foot. To form neat stitches on the wrong side of the fabric, move needle up and down one time to pull up the bobbing thread onto the top of fabric and lower the presser foot. Then, sew two three lock stitches while holding both the needle and bobbing threads together. Use both hands to guide the fabric while taking up slack in the fabric. Aim for a stitch length of about 1.5 to 2.0 millimeters. Use the screw to adjust the height of the presser foot to suit the fabric thickness. The fabric can be moved without resistance when the presser foot is positioned about 1 mm above the fabric. When you are finished free motion sewing, move the drop feed knob back to the left. The feed dog will rise when you resume sewing. By using the foot controller, you can free up both hands to guide the fabric more easily. Kilting patterns numbers 18 to 34 are random stitch patterns. These playful patterns vary the width of each stitch automatically. Select kilting pattern number 27. Use the presser foot I. These patterns give a decorative look to the junctions of crazy kilts and patchworks, for example. We hope that this DVD has given you a better understanding of your new computer sewing machine. If you have any further questions, please refer to your instruction manual. We hope you will enjoy your sewing!